Hi folks, G3 here, and welcome to another installment of my journey to go green. Today's video is all about how I have been doing charging my EV away from home. This was requested by one of my subscribers, Matthew. Thanks so much for uh, asking. Yep, I have had the car for, what, about 14 months now. And as I've documented before, I'm not able to charge at home. I'll include a link up above to show you when I first got the car and uh, and talking about sort of the, the issues I had with home charging. I live in a house that doesn't have a driveway and equally I can't park outside the house and charge from there because all the parking on my road is on the other side of the road so I'd have to trail cables across. Now I knew this when I was going to get in the car in the first place I did a lot of research about how it was going to be possible whether there would be problems and stuff so I knew that there were lots of chargers around and that I should in theory be able to um, do it fairly easily. Obviously I don't have the convenience of just walking down to a car that's fully charged in the morning. I have to sort of have a trip to uh, to make a charge and, and there are issues with some charges around about. Now let's get the main point out of the way first off and people will be saying, oh, but you've got a Tesla. Because yes, I bought a Tesla Model S and there is a fantastic supercharger network for Teslas, but I don't have one near me. It's around about 30 miles to the nearest one in Maidstone so it's not on my regular daily trips. There is one nearer at um, the Channel Tunnel in Folkestone but I can't access it because it is only for people that are traveling on the Channel Tunnel. You can only get it when you're sort of actually going through the barriers and then charging up there. It's not accessible otherwise. So I don't have superchargers near me. When I go on a longer journey for holidays and the like, yes, I'm able to use them. Fantastic network, really easy. But locally, I have to rely on the network of other chargers. Things like I'm at Instavolt today, so that's a Bannatine gym in Folkestone. There are um, Podpoint at a local Lidl store. Um, equally, I've got some uh, electric highway at nearby Folkestone services and Ionity. Ionity... Um, yeah, I'll come on to that. Since I've had the car, I've made a point of logging all of my charging. I record the percentage when I arrive, when I leave, the mileage, how much I've put in um, in kilowatt hours and how much it's cost me. And I keep a running total so I can work out overall how much I've spent, uh, the efficiency, mileage and that kind of thing. So I know for a fact, since I've had the car, I've done over 10,000 miles. It's actually 10,166 at the moment. And you can see all of these stats on on the Excel sheet where I keep all this information because I shared that and you can look down below and you'll find a link to that. As well as doing 10,166 miles, it has cost me 1,352 pounds. And that equates to a cost per mile of 13 pence. So 13 pence per mile. If I was home charging and paying a lot less for my charging, obviously it would be an awful lot less that it would be costing me per mile. But at the moment, it is 13 pence that I've paid. In the time that I have been charging, I have put in 4,519 kilowatt hours, reasonable amount. And of that, approximately 300 I got for free. So round about 7 8%, I think that is, I got for free. Now that is when you go to some shopping centres. They'll give you uh, the opportunity to charge up for free whilst you're using them. So I've had that at, uh, I think it was a Tesco store generally. And also sometimes when a charger is new or faulty, they might um, give you a free charge. So I've got that electric highway before when there was a new charger in. And so I've got some free charging there. I have managed to get a reasonable amount for free so it's over 300 kilowatt hours of free charging which is great but the rest of it it's cost me 13 pence per mile which i think is pretty reasonable now the issues that i have found from charging around about is that um i mean i'm at the vagaries uh, of the charging network just as everyone else because i'm not using the tesla superchargers um, that often so i mean as an example i'm at instavolt here today i've already had to change chargers because the first one failed after dishing in about i think it was about six percent of um, battery charge and it, it threw a fault and it did that the other day um it was regularly throwing a fault i, I would sort of get in about six percent it would stop, I would have to reset, um, so stop the charge, 
um, wait for it to get ready and then put the charger back in again and, and start and it would trickle in another five or, or so percent. Really frustrating. And it looked like it was doing that again today. I, I've moved chargers and at the moment it's it's working okay, but um, you know, touch wood, um, we'll see. So the charging network has its vagaries. Um, now that they have upgraded the electric highway chargers at Folkestone Services, they are in theory more reliable, but there are only two chargers there and it's a motorway services. So at the moment they do get um, used uh, quite regularly and it's, you know, you can't rely on turning up there and being able to charge. You might have to wait for a while. The charger that I've probably enjoyed using most for reliability and availability is um, the, the pod point charger at my local Lidl. Now there is only one, so it is a little bit of a lottery going there and it being free so I've tended to go early in the morning, late at night, that kind of thing, to make sure that I can get uh, a charge at it. And then I get a really good speed and it's a very good price as well. So, so that's great. The one thing that I've used mostly, I suppose, out and about is when I've been going shopping, I've tried to find um, car parks that have charges available. The quality of those varies an awful lot. Um, for example, there is a shopping center in Dover, the St. James Square, and it, it's got a charger there that is so beat up. It just, I don't think it can work for anybody. Um, um, it looks appalling. Yet some other networks like uh, the connected curb network around Dover um, and I've used them in Rochester are, are really good. They're reliable chargers, uh, good price. Now initially I did have a little bit of a rant about those and I'll include a link up here to that rant because the minimum deposit on the account was uh, 50 pounds um, but the, uh, credit to them they responded well to um, to the rant and changed the minimum amount that you had to put on your card uh, had to put on your account I think it's 10 pound now um, so that was really good they listened but the network itself is really good I like that I think it's seven kilowatts the um, the power on the charges um, locally so I can trickle in a bit when I'm uh, doing my shopping for an hour or so uh, and that really helps. If I know I've got a few journeys coming up, what I tend to do, so maybe once or twice a week, I will plan a visit to one of the faster chargers in the area and have a stop for a while. So I might be stopped there for an hour or so charging up and making sure that I've got a nice long charge that's gonna last me a little while. I go prepared, I take my laptop, um, I take a magazine, knowing that I'm gonna be there for a little while. Now this is a little inconvenient, having to do that, yes, but because I'm able to take my laptop um, or some reading that I was gonna do, you know, I, I make it productive. I make sure that it's something that I'm able to, to do whilst I'm there. I've got used to it. It's part of the nature of the driving that I am doing because I don't do the home charging. So I know that I need to make allowances and find things to do when I am doing those occasional charging stops. That's that's not bad. I mean, it, it's just part of part of what I'm doing. It, it's, it's just life charging away from home. That, that, that's just how it is and I'm, I'm being productive and, and getting charge in because I've got to make sure that I've, I, I have enough for the journeys that I'm going to be doing but equally the battery drain as well because generally I've found that this car will lose about 2% a day in winter and other times it's less than that it might be 1% every couple of days perhaps something like that so I've got to make sure that I have got enough to cover for that if I'm not going to be driving for for a little while because I have the luxury of home working, so I'm not always gonna be out and about driving every day. I'm, it might be once a week that I, I need to use the car or, or maybe even less than that. So I need to make sure that I've got enough um, charge in for my journeys and the, um, the battery drain that's gonna occur. And that occurs because um, there's things that need to be kept on, uh, kept going, when the car isn't in use. Various different bits and pieces that happen in the background. So that's quite standard. It needs a little bit of uh, um, battery to be able to cope with that. The main thing to say about this is that I have uh, been able to cope quite, I think, relatively easily with charging away from home. The key takeaways for me are making sure that if you've got an opportunity to put in a little bit of charge so if you're going somewhere that does have a charger available like a car park when you're shopping then you know aim to put a little bit in every little bit helps and what i have been doing is making sure that my journeys take into account that i will need a little bit of time on occasion to do a charge so if i am going to be going out for a day 
I will make sure that I've got an opportunity to stop at a local charging. So the, the services, or as I'm doing today, InstaVolt, to put in a reasonable amount. Now you need to be mindful of anyone else that's coming along to use the chargers if there's a queue or anything like that. So I need to be mindful uh, of that. But all the time there aren't people here, I will stop and put in a little bit more than I might need to for that day so that I've got a bit of cover for, for the future to make sure I've got enough for that battery drain and uh, the fact that I might not be using the car for a little while. Cost wise, it's been pretty much what I was anticipating. So it's cost me 13 pence per mile uh, and that is purely for the electricity cost. I'm not talking about any other ancillary costs to do with a car. That is purely to do with um, the cost I've paid for the electricity when I've been out and about. And I think that's pretty reasonable considering I'm not able to um, to get that uh, that cheaper home charging. Now, recently, a lot of the networks have put their fees up. So that is going to have a bit of an impact uh, because obviously they're reacting to the cost of electricity going up in general at the moment. But still, you can find some reasonably affordable charging around about. So at the moment the connected curb is costing me 26 pence per kilowatt, um, which I think is um, uh, pretty pretty good. The one I'm on at the moment, the um, faster charger with InstaVolt, that's 50 pence. So that has gone up. I think it was around about 40 pence when I first started using uh, using their network. So things have gone up a bit. So my, my cost per mile will go up obviously um, accordingly, but at the moment it's 13 pence per mile, which I think is quite reasonable. So I would say if you're thinking of getting an electric car and you're not able to home charge, don't let it put you off. It, you will be able to charge without a problem out and about. You just need to adapt your style a little bit and make sure that on a occasion you are having a longer charge somewhere and putting in more than enough to cope so you'll just take some a book to read um, you know have a look on your phone um, or, or go and do it at a place where you're able to go and do a bit of shopping at the same time because you know some of the charging stations are near shops and facilities and the like the one I'm at at the moment isn't this InstaVolt uh, gym there's, there's nothing nearby so when I come here that's it I am just doing the charging but so um, don't let it put you off what I would say is that I have found um, owning an electric car awesome it's really good I'm very fortunate that I was able to get an amazing deal on this Tesla Model S because I bought it at a time of the pandemic when we were sort of between lockdowns and people weren't necessarily going out and buying cars at the time so I got this I think it's around about 20 25 percent less than they are currently going for from Tesla I bought um, secondhand from them uh, with a really good deal on the warranty and the like and uh, a very good price so it made it affordable for me and if you're able to um, to get an electric car yourself secondhand or or, or new if you're you're fortunate enough to have the uh, the funds then i would say do it um do it as soon as you can because uh, it's it's really good i'm really enjoying it and doing so without the ability to home charge quite possible um quite doable and i think uh, it's quite affordable as well so uh that's it folks that's my summary of having the car for a year and not being able to home charge hope you enjoyed it if you did then please click the like button down below and if you haven't done so already then why not subscribe to the channel and click the bell icon so you get notified when I load up a new video. Well, thanks for watching, folks. Until next time, bye.